Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So sitting here in the Shelby, beautiful day. It's not often that we get some uh, some good weather this time of year that we can get out. So it's up in the 50s, nice and sunny, warm. Warm compared to this time of the year. We had a good rain over the weekend that washed all the salt and the brine and everything off the road. So it should be nice and clean. Shouldn't have any overspray on, on the car or anything. Um, you see the uh, lead foot boost. F-150 sitting there. Haven't seen too much of that. Just a couple mods here and there. So we got that sitting in the, in the driveway as we are going to go out in the, in the Shelby. So if you noticed from the, the video with checking the oil in the Shelby's, and if you have a Shelby, you know that that dipstick is directly underneath strut tower brace. So sometimes it can it can be difficult to uh, to get down in there. Sometimes you need a light to see uh to see where you're you're putting that dipstick back in so you see with george installing the gt500 aluminum cam covers from the predator motor they fit perfectly on his voodoo so previous video he had him paint it to mac match his car and uh what he's going to do today is He's going to take care of that problem of having to reach underneath that strut tower brace to check the oil. So on the GT500 and with that Predator motor, there's an extension for the oil dipstick to bring it forward so it's not underneath that strut tower brace. So George did some homework, figured out that he can attach the that extension dipstick tube to that Predator cam cover like the gt500 is and he'll explain more to you know we did a uh, he did a, a little dry run if the gt500 dipstick will work on the gt350 so he did that checked it out saw that the gt500 dipstick is still a little too short with the tube on so when we get over there We'll see what his remedy is with that and the homework that he did to resolve that issue. So, short drive over to George's house, get in his garage, and uh, see what we can do with getting this thing installed. Stay tuned. Shelby again and we're gonna work on this this dipstick extension that is on the uh, GT500 Predator motor so that little extension there will bring it forward enough to where it gives you some room past the the strut tower brace so we took the strut tower brace out just to give us some room to show where that extension is going to go right down on the driver's side so he bought a new tube just to see how a new one will go in so this is all trial and error with this this is new for him to figure out how to make this all work. And the hex piece in the top there is for installation and removal. I took a regular 3 8 bolt. I ground the top flat, took the rounded edges off of this so it'd be nice and grab good and put a nylock nut on the end. And that way it'll lock and I can put a socket or anything else on it I want to turn it. And this pops right in there. You see where it just sits, stays right in there now. So that should turn it, twist it right down and lock it. There's a lock tab on the on the side of this so to remove it you got to push that little lock tab in, in and then turn and it. then turn it 
And what it was it a? Uh... It turns and, and rises up as it turns. Okay. And then you can grab it to pull it out, and that's where it's different for everything. And what I found works well. Two things you could try: a piece of rubber tubing in there, packed in, and it'll grab it to turn it. Or what I really liked is I used a five thirty seconds easy out. And that locks right into the tube tight because it's left-hand thread, so it backs it out perfectly. So that should be the way to go, I think. But it makes it easier. You can get it out by hand. The first one we did, we did get it out by hand. Well, we'll see how this works, and and we'll go from there. If it works, it works. So we'll put and the tube in first, and then we're gonna we'll check it with the standard dipstick once we get the tube in to make sure it is oriented correctly, and we're getting the right oil level. Right. Yeah, that's a whole another issue with the dipsticks. We'll go over that with uh, the different lengths and everything that you once need. Once the tube's in. Yeah, once that tube gets in. All right. Let's we'll so see how this works. This tube's got to orient. Tabs are on top and bottom, so the tabs are here, top and bottom. So this lock tab would be straight down, and then it'll, it'll rotate to the right to lock. So it's just that. like a quarter turn, or? Yeah, it looks about like quarter turn. So we'll see how this slides straight down in there. This oriented correctly. Okay, she's pushing down in there. So now let's try this out and see if I can get this tool to push it down in there and lock it. I don't know if you'll be able to see my yeah. hand down in there. Let me uh, get it in there first. Yeah, it's a tight area. Boy, is it ever. Taking a strut tower brace off helps out to reach down in there. And you have to do that anyway for the cam covers. Yeah, quick, there we go, now it's in. All right, now turning and locking in. Let's see if we can get it to go all the way. I think, it's gotta, I, think I gotta push it down to get the seal to seat first. I think that's what we gotta do. Man, this is a new tube, so probably a little stiffer than the original one. It should be right where it goes in. I felt like it went down yeah, that time. Yeah, it looked like. Let's see if it's locked. Yes, it is locked. I'll try and get some light in there so you can get a picture of that lock assembly. There you go. There we go. Yeah, you can see the lock tab there. It's dead against yep. the lock tab and it's seated down in there. Mm -hmm. So, with the tube back in, whether you use your stock tube or a new tube, that little thing pushed it right in there with the socket and the knurled piece on the end just for turning it. You could use a ratchet or anything that you can get in there. Just a tight fit. So now, give it a good push in and then... Push in, in. Yeah, and then turn it 90 degrees. Quarter turn. Now we'll try the stock dipstick, make sure we're in it oriented correctly because the first time we did this, it didn't orient correctly. So, if I had more light down there, it'd be better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, dipstick's seems, in. Yeah. It seems to be pretty good. Yeah, and that's a great place to put a dipstick to get them in and out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Way down in there. Yeah. And with that strut tower brace, it's, you know, you're working around that thing. All right, you can see it's right right below that second hole right there. Okay, so we know the tube's oriented correctly. So now we go to the next phase. A lot of explaining to do here. <laughs> Originally, I bought this dipstick to go with, with the, the extended tube on the 500. This is the 500's dipstick. When we put it in, it's three quarters of an inch short on meeting the full mark. It, it reads the oil level, but it doesn't read it correctly as the stock stick does. So what we did was took a measurement on what I needed lengthwise on the stock 500 stick, and I needed three quarters of an inch more. And thanks to Chris's help in <laughs> Google, we were able to go online and actually find a replacement dipstick. And it turns out it's a Dorman 917 320. And it is the perfect length. Uh, all you do is you knock the pin out of the Dorman, take the dipstick out, knock the pin out of your stock dipstick, which I have a second one here, slide the new one in, put the pin back in, and you're set. Now, the only other modification you have to make to this dipstick is the end of it. If you look at these, they are a 90 degree twist. This is flat and the, the tip is turned 90 degrees straight up. I don't know if you can get that or not. So the Dorman had to be turn it's it's probably a 45 degree angle we had to take it up to, to a 90 degree angle so you just twist the end a little yeah, bit yeah so i just locked a pair of pliers on here and then just took the other end and turned it until it was 90 degrees and then it matches the original it. now the Dorman also is marked for full and add uh it did not have the holes in it like the fords do i drilled the holes into it to match it up and you can get the hash marks you can see yeah. that on there and we verified that when i put that in before i did that we verified it that it did match onto the full mark exactly as it was with that being said now we can go back and install our gt 500s dipstick tube now, as, we, as we said before this will not fit on the stock cam covers because of the 
plastic boss that sits around the mounting bolt. This will not fit down into it. So, but on these, it'll fit in. Perfectly. So the only way to do it is to install it on the Predator cam covers. Yeah, even if you remove the mount, the plastic material around the mounting bolt on the other ones, the bolts don't come out of those. Mm -hmm. If you remember, they're right. locked That's into right. the, to yeah. those covers. Yep. Uh, you could probably force it out, but yeah. I, you'd probably do more damage than good. So. Right. So this is an addition. If you do the GT500 Predator cam, cam covers, then you want to install this uh, extension for the dipstick. Right. Okay. And this just pushes in just like a dipstick does. Just got two O-ring seals on it, and the bolt goes through for the mounting of the cover. So we'll push that in. Get some light down in here. So that just goes right in like that. That's all there is to it. Line the hole up for the bolts. Yeah, just sticks right into the where the dipstick tube goes. Yep. And, and now you can see where the, the bolt goes. And I'll put that, that in, and then we'll get a and shot of that for you. Once that's tight, it'll pull that dipstick into that yes. slot, and be that's nice what and tight. we'll do now. All right. So there again, quarter inch, eight millimeter, and a quarter inch drive with a swivel on the end. And boy, they are long. If you can see that stick pulling right up there all right good and tight that's it pretty simple yeah, yeah that's... After, after you get everything uh situated yeah yeah once you get everything situated and we found like <laughs> you said that's the key for putting those covers on is to pull that dipstick tube first otherwise you can't pull the whole thing out it just it just won't work right okay once that's in dipstick goes in that's how she mounts up and it brings it forward and George noticed now with this tube installed, the driver side for performance oil separator will not fit because of that uh, that extension now. Yeah, the tube on the uh, in intake side there runs right over top of this. It won't will not work unless you want to fabricate a new tube somehow. <clears throat> That's the only way to right. do it. But but then it just it really crowd the area up a little bit anyway. So I think it looks pretty good that way. Yeah. So it looks nice. It opens up that side without having it. Um, he does still you have see the she's right, passenger side. It's right at the bottom of that hole, just like on the other one when it was. Yeah. See if you can see it on there. Yep. Everything's good. So. So I'm happy with that. I mean, and I have not had a problem with the car using any oil. So 10 quarts is 10 quarts. It stays, stays good. So I, it, it seems to be okay. Yeah, so simple install. We'll see what it looks like with this strut tower brace over. So now with the strut tower brace over it, and you can see right there, it puts it just forward. Yeah, it's, it's easy to grab and pull out and put back in. So it's no more reaching down to a hot engine or on the sides here to get to it. And you try can and find it to finesse it back in. Yeah, you can see it right there. You don't need a flashlight to, to find it. Puts it in a good spot. Sitting over top, you can see how far it brings it past the strut tower brace. So... Good deal. It worked. It, it worked out. So, and put the new tube in. I didn't need to put the new tube in, but just to explain to you guys why I put a new tube in, if you want, want to put this in, getting this thing to come out was tough uh, because we didn't realize how the thing was put together. The tube really needs to come out before you pull your old covers off because the cover cannot come up out of there. This tube binds and, and won't let it come out. But this tube now turns on the piece, and I didn't know if we had damaged it any with that. So that's the only reason I decided to replace the, the tube assembly. Uh, it's still a good tube. Uh, this one did have a bend in it. Uh, the, the new one does not, and it went right in, in place. So, yeah. yeah. So it was okay. When we originally put this one back in with that bend, it pointed the dipstick off in a different direction, apparently. So we had to take it out and reconfigure it. That's why I went with right. the new one. Uh, but that's about the story on that. All right. So just a little addition, yeah. <laughs> a little addition to the... To the cam covers, if you want to put the GT500 cam covers on a GT350, you can do and, the, the dipstick extension. And they're technically not all just GT500. They are performance, Ford performance cam covers. They okay. fit the Coyotes, and they've okay. been available for years. All right. So it's the same one. Uh, and like I said, you also gain five extra bolts for covering right. the covers on each one. Uh, no leaks. I've had it out for a rundown. I had no leaks at all in it at all. So it's it, it sealed up good. All right, good deal. So if it helps you out getting that work done, check out the video installing the cam covers. It's a long video, but it's very informative. You know, tells you everything you need to do. <laughs> it so, tells you what not to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it'll, it's all in there. It'll help out. There's some more work coming coming to George's car, so we'll get that on, on, the, on the show also. So thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Until next time, take care.